politics and, and uh, cultural, cultural issues, issues that, that consign Africans, Africans and, and in diaspora. diaspora. So you are so highly, you are highly welcome, welcome to this, this um, program. program. Um, you are you here, are here sir, sir, because, because we, want we want to talk, to talk about, about the abduction of, of the leader of the, of the IPOB, IPOB Mazin Dam Dam Kano, Kano, and the possible, possible release, release of, uh, of uh, this innocent, innocent young man. man. And, uh, and uh, we have <laughs> had um, um, on a conference, conference Zoom conference, conference Nam Dam Kano's attorney, Barrister Aloy Etibako. We also have... The member of the parliament, like I've said, Andres Hunko. Andres Hunko is here because he wants to listen and want to hear from the horse's mouth. Um, and that is the barrister um, of Namdekano. You want to hear from him what he's going to say about the detention of Namdekano by the Nigerian government, the continued detention of Namdekano. And Andre, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hunko also has something to say about. Uh, what can be done or what he uh, proposes he can make in the uh, uh, Bundes parliament. So that's why both of you um, are going to be here and we are going to have this discussion today. So gentlemen, once again, you are highly welcome. And um, I'm going to start with you, Barrister. Barrister, you can yes. hear me, right? Yeah, I can, loud and clear. Okay. So, um, Mazin Nambekanu was abducted by the Kenyan Special Police at the International Airport on 18th June, 2021, and subsequently taken to an unknown place or location under inhuman condition. He was unlawfully detained in Kenya for a good uh, eight days before being transferred to the Nigerian government. He has, so far, he has been accused of a crime bordering on terrorism. Um, but your colleague, Ifani um, Ejo, first said that the charges against Namde Kanu have no basis in Nigerian law. Barrister, could you please shed light on this matter? Yes. Uh, thank you, Robinson, for having me on. And um, I greet you, uh, Mr. Andre. I'm happy to be on the same panel with you. My name, as he said before, is Aloy Ichimako. I'm the special counsel to Mase Nambekan. Well, you made um, a reference to the offenses Nigerian government or the allegations the Nigerian government has leveled against Mase Nambekan. Yes, it's correct to characterize almost all those offenses as having no basis in any written law in Nigeria. I think with the exception of only one allegation. The others uh, are captured under the political offense exception, uh, especially since we are talking about uh, the international law or the laws of Kenya and Nigeria uh, relating to extradition of uh, of uh, fugitive uh, suspects from one country to the other. But let me leave that aside for a while and take the charges one by one. If you look critically at this whole thing, you will recall that these offenses stemmed or well, these allegations were grounded upon the enterprise and the kind of has been engaged uh, since 2015, perhaps since 2014, I believe, from 2015. And that very enterprise is called self, -determin self determination. Self determination, by international law, self determination is not a crime. As a matter of fact, it's a right protected under international law and under municipal laws, including the laws of Federation of Nigeria, where you can find it at chapter A9, laws of Federation of Nigeria, 2004. Article 20 of that very law, Nigerian law, which was codified in 1983, 
revised and self determination shall be legal and oppressed peoples shall have the right to free themselves from the bonds of oppression through means recognized by the international community. So Mazin Mandekano has been engaged in this enterprise of safe determination since, let's say since 2015 with the members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. Now, the, the, as I said before, that very law says through means recognized by the international community. That same determination that Mazikano has been pursuing, he has never done it through any illegal means. He has always demanded for referendum. Referendum is recognized by international community. Referendum is not a crime in any non-municipal law or under any international law. So when the law of Nigeria says safe determination shall be legal if it is pursued through means recognized by the international community and someone is pursuing safe determination demanding for referendum and then you begin to charge that someone with several offenses. So all these allegations, all the offenses uh, that Mazikano is facing in court right now, sprang out. They are all products of this self-determination, the quest for self-determination through referendum. And section 36, subsection 12 of Nigerian constitution says that you cannot charge or try any Nigerian of any offense not found in any written law in Nigeria. The principal offense, the main offense Kano is being charged with is secession. It is written there boldly, it's one of the counts. As a matter of fact, I see it as a major count. So they are charging him for uh, making radio broadcasts from his location in UK, expressing his intention to secede from Nigeria. If you go to the Nigerian Criminal Code Act, which uh, regulates offenses in the southern part of Nigeria, and the Penal Code, which uh, codified offenses for the northern part of Nigeria, you will not find anything that says that secession is a criminal offense. So that's why you know, we have maintained this position that the offenses are unknown to law. Others are reason and so on and so forth. And of course, there's one particular one that says that charging for defaming the character of the president. And how can you defame the character of somebody who is not a compelable witness? Under the Nigerian constitution, the president is immune from being summoned to court to testify. He's not a com compelable witness. So how can you charge Mr. Kano of uh, defaming him when the president will not be available to testify in court as to his character? So these are the things, the challenges that we have noted in these charges and um, um, that led us to believe that charges are not grounded in law. Uh, apart from that, um, there appears not to be any uh, scintilla of evidence that can point to anything that um, uh, can prove these offenses in court. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, uh, information. Um, before we go further, I would like to touch on the issue of uh, uh, the member of the parliament Andre Hunko, uh, uh, he is, as I've said, a member of the German uh, Bundestag uh, for the parliamentary group of the, uh, the left party. And he's a member of the, um, he has been a member of this uh, uh, Bundestag for, I think, since 2009, and is a very important person when it concerns the issue of the European Council. I think he's called the European uh, Peace. Uh, he has been the Europe. Andre, you have been the, uh, in the European peace since 2010, if I'm correct. 
Okay. Well, I can maybe I can explain what I. <laughs> All right, uh, right. Um, so I, I wanted to my... make a brief statement before you can uh, then continue, yes. but you can go ahead and explain. So. So thank you very much, Robinson, for this um, invitation. It's an honor for me to to be here present. Um, I'm now just re-elected a member of German Parliament. Uh, dealing with European affairs mainly, and I'm as well, but I'm as well a member of um, the Foreign Affairs Committee in the German Parliament. So that's of course as well dealing with uh, Africa and Nigeria and the whole world. And I'm a member of the uh, Council of Europe, but the Council of Europe is not dealing with uh, states outside uh, the 47 member state of Council of Europe. So concerning uh, the situation in um, Nigeria and uh, Biafra. Um, I have to say that I'm very new in this um, issue. Um, I try to understand the conflict, uh, and I have to say I'm very worried, worried about the developments in the last uh, weeks and months, uh, uh, because it seems um, that there is uh, um, <clears throat> uh, the idea of uh, having a kind of military solution to oppress the um, independence uh, desires uh, um, there. Uh, this seems the politics of the Nigerian government. Um, I'm as well very worried because um, I think in 2017, the, um, uh, how do you spell it, IPOP, the indigenous people of Biafra is, um, you are correct, sir. Uh, that is IPOP. Yeah. Yes. IPOP yeah. is um, labeled from Nigeria as a terrorist organization. Uh, um, and uh, and uh, so Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Namdi Kanu is uh, seen as a head of a, of a terrorist organization. This is what, what, uh, um, what is very worrying me because I observed uh, the development in several states um, um, trying to solve these kinds of problems uh, in these uh, uh, terms of terrorism. For example, in Turkey, uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a big problem there. What I understood so far is that uh, uh, no Western state, not uh, the European Union, nor the US, nor the UK is following that uh, um, characterization by Nigerian government to see IPOP as a terrorist organization. Maybe, uh, Mr. Barrister, you can, can uh, um, uh, um, maybe you can uh, um, explain, uh, explain yes, uh, about what is but as far as I understood, um, so far there is no support for this position of Nigerian government. And I'm very worried as well about the circumstances of the, um, um, of the uh, uh, arrest of uh, Mr. Kanu, uh, probably in Kenya. Uh, it's, uh, all what I could read is uh, uh, it's not 100% clear, but through Interpol, uh, and uh, um, so it's a, a bit a strange uh, um, uh, uh, issue because in Interpol, it's out uh, in inter the statutes of Interpol, there should be no arrest on political issues. Uh, it's in the statute of Interpol. So um, maybe uh, Mr. Bursa, you can, can as well uh, explain about this. I have okay. read that there are some so-called um, friendly nations of Nigeria who are supporting the line of Nigeria, characterizing um, IPOP as a terrorist organization. Uh, um, maybe you, you know more about this. I could not find it out. So what I can, can do, I, I try to follow the situation. I, can, I try to understand what is the position of the German government. Um, I think, um, I, I can try to, to follow the position of the European Union, which could be an important player in the whole process. 
uh, and I can make a request on, on, on my government and make it an issue in, in the German parliament. So that's that's my position and situation All at right. the moment. But okay. um, a general, maybe last word, uh, a general, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very much in favor, and I think it's the same what you um, said, Mr. A. Makor, um, that uh, there has to be a, a dialogue solution in Nigeria and not a military uh, solution. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, I think um, the point you have made so far um, is understandable. I think uh, you are here actually, like you've said, because um, you are not just a, a member of the parliament, but you, you're you have a role to play in the European um, communities like other areas such as uh, last time you were essentially uh, observing the election in Uzbekistan. Yeah. And those are the things you do that makes you also uh, important for the issue of Kano's discussion. Um, could you tell us what you, um, um, uh, how it is when you are, when you were in, uh, in the Tokai, you were in the Tokai 2000 and, uh, 2014, 2017, and I believe uh, 2000 and, uh, 2017, 2011, perhaps. So you observed the election. I've been, yeah, I've, I've been several times in Turkey, um, maybe a dozen of times. I followed the situation very close, and the problem was, and uh, I think it was 2015 or um, when the government lost the elections in Turkey, the AKP had no own majority anymore in June, I think it was 2015, I'm not sure, um, uh, there was a uh, swift, uh, um, uh, because this was uh, when the pro-Kurdish uh, left-wing party HDP entered the parliament for the first time because they had a 10% threshold, they could uh, surpass this with 13%. And then there, there was made a decision to, 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 uh, to to try to uh, have a so-called military solution uh, in Turkey, and since then we have a new wave of uh, of, um, of, uh, of big problems there. We have lots of arrests and so on, uh, and um, <clears throat> and I have to say the European Union is very heavily criticizing uh, the the way. Turkey is using the term terrorism because the Turkey uses it for every opposition. And uh, that's uh, um, uh, so that's a misuse of the term terrorism. Uh, and uh, it could be, I'm not so familiar with Nigeria, but it could be that it, it is the same uh, idea what is, uh, um, what is going on in Nigeria. Um, misuse of uh, of uh, the term of terrorism for uh, maybe um, civic um, opposition movement for independence desires, um, and that is uh, uh, I strongly criticize. Okay, thank you. So you just mentioned the point, the exact point why I wanted you to uh, arrive to this discussion because. Uh, at the same time, I want the, the barrister to tell us from um, uh, a juridistic point of view, if fighting for, if fighting for self-determination is a crime in any place in the United Nations or any other uh, segment of the law in, in humankind. Barrister, sir, is it a crime? Um, because I believe that one, um, one crime which Namdi Kano seems to have committed is that he's uh, uh, seeking for self-determination of the Biafran. Is it a crime for anybody to ask for self-determination? No, it's not. I think I had made that point earlier on. Uh, perhaps it didn't quite come out clearly. But before I say anything for that, let me most sincerely thank the German parliamentarian for his interest in the Biafran uh, It will go a long way to 
spot lighting, the plan of the Biafrans to the international community uh, as a whole community. And I was quite touched and grateful they might that up before the uh, German uh, parliament. Uh, that will go a long way to helping to save lives. Because yes, as he said, or as he suspected, the Nigerian government is applying a military solution to what is primarily or basically a civil or political conflict that requires dialogue, not bullets, not military solution. It doesn't even require the participation of the judiciary. Uh, nobody needs to be prosecuted for engaging in uh, acts of self-determination or for uh, being in quest of self-determination. Because what I think is going on, the international community needs to understand that self-determination appears to be an inconvenient uh, political opinion to the government of the day in Nigeria. So what Government is doing a means of punishment and uh, channels of punishment. The government of Nigeria, mostly to prosecution and military action. This military action has led to a lot of extrajudicial killings of innocent people. The prosecution has turned from prosecution to persecution, and all because of what he says, I want a separate country. There is nowhere in the world that such things should draw the kind of the kind of countervailing measures the Nigerian government has levied against the indigenous people of Biafra and Biafrans as a whole for possessing, for merely possessing a political opinion. So that brings me to declaration of IPOB as a terrorist organization in 2017. That declaration for the information of the parliamentarian and any listener out there was done ex parte. It was done without notice to IPOB or Mazen Mandekan or to his lawyers. What happened is that the attorney general of Nigeria just walked into the chambers of a judge and made a request by himself to the judge in chambers, not in open court, that IPOB is a terrorist organization. And the judge gave him a court order saying that IPOB is a terrorist organization. So, but that court order has been appealed. Normally, when a court order is appealed in Nigeria, what that court order says should happen doesn't happen until the appeal is decided. But in this very instance, the government went ahead to implement the court order despite the pendency of the appeal. And I can tell you, factually speaking, IPOB did not meet the elements contained in Nigeria's Anti-Terrorism Act of 2015 to be declared a terrorist group. That very act, especially at section two of the act, clearly characteristics the threats must possess before it is declared a terrorist organization. IPOB did not possess those characteristics in 2017. IPOB does not possess those characteristics in 2021. So the declaration, even though it was done on the strength, on the presentation of one party only, also lacked evidence indicating that IPOB was engaged perhaps why the international community did not fall in line or no nation in the world, in the civilized world, recognized what Nigeria had done in 2017 by declaring IPOB a terrorist organization. Okay. What we have seen, yes. Yeah. So what, 
uh, to conclude, let me conclude that. All right, all right. So, right. yeah, yes. So it's a convenient uh, tool chosen by the government in, in order to, uh, you know, uh, lay the military uh, option against the IPOB. Thank you. All right. So actually what you are saying is that in a certain word, uh, okay, let me not say in a certain word, in a, in a uh, normal uh, uh, lawful procedure, the declaration of IPOB as a terrorist uh, organization would have been an unlawful move on its own as well, because uh, the, the rule wasn't uh, done accordingly. I mean, the declaration of IPOB as a, a terrorist group. Now, could you please, um, um, now the Kanu left um, Nigeria, I mean, uh, the, one of the accusations again, sorry, one of the accusations is that uh, that has uh, kept coming up in the media is that Namdi Kanu jumped bail. And this is the narrative uh, most um, uh, mainstream media has uh, purported, I mean, uh, in, in the whole discussion. Could you please shed light on this issue of jump bail? Yes, I can. He never jumped bail. Jumping bail is a volitional, volitional act, is a voluntary act. It, it, it carries a certain element of intention on your part, premeditation, to evade the long arms of the law. Okay? You don't jump bail without knowing that you jump bail. There is a knowingness, a voluntariness. What happened in September 2017 is what should be open to question. Man ran for his life. This was a man that was free of bond, relaxing at his house. Then all of a sudden, on or about 10 September 2017, a detachment of Nigerian security forces led by the army went to his residence and commenced military assault thereon. 28 people were killed, several were, dozens were wounded, several were abducted and taken away to unknown uh, locations. Mazi and Nam Dekano was lucky to escape with injuries. That's what happened. And from that very date, the entire locale of the Federal Republic of Nigeria became too dangerous for him to stay. It wasn't just the locale of his premises. The army declared him wanted, dead or alive, declared him a terrorist. And the rules of engagement of Nigerian army when it comes to making contact with a terrorist is to kill, to shoot to kill, not shoot to men, not shoot to wound, not to arrest, but to shoot to kill. So Nandi Kano's life was in danger throughout the territory of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What led to that was an involuntary act on his part. He never premeditated. He was waiting for his next court date, the very next month in October. So the very party, the federal government of Nigeria had already had him in court, gained jurisdiction over him, and knew that he was free on bond, went his ass to kill him without court order, without nothing. He wasn't convicted and condemned to date. They didn't go to arrest him. Somebody said, oh, they, maybe they went there to arrest him. How can you go to arrest somebody and kill 28 people just to arrest one person? Okay, so actually, the, going by the, the little nature of the attack, the magnitude, the only conclusion that could have been drawn by any reasonable bystander or victim, such as a man they can know, was that this was directed at getting him killed that this was directed at getting him killed. So he made a lucky escape. He didn't jump bail. So he, even if he jumped bail, if anybody jumps bail and manages to leave the territorial boundaries of that very nation and makes it to another nation, his, his rights, human rights don't depart him. 
if the government of Nigeria encountered Nandekano in Kenya, even if Nandekano jumped bail, he didn't, but let us assume that he did and made his way to Kenya. If Nigerian government encountered him in Kenya, they were supposed to give him the benefit of extradition, not extraordinary rendition. Yeah, now so you are talking. John, John Bell or not John Bell did not mean that Nandekano was bereft of his human rights as a person. Thank you. Okay. Um, so remember, uh, you still have to uh, lead us to this very important discussion that we have just raised. Extraordinary rendition is, uh, it's become like a, 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 a song that everybody knows uh, from your mouth. Um, it's not a song. Uh, the issue of Nambikano is a terrible thing. Uh, we can see that uh, he went through uh, serious uh, human rights, uh, uh, serious abuse of his human rights in Kenya. And uh, you, we know the word extraordinary rendition from your mouth. Can you shed light to that? How does it affect the life of your client? And um, how does, I mean, what does it mean to, um, to justify, I mean, in, in context of Nigerian government as, 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 as a country that should abide to human rights? Yes, you see, to, to break it down and for some of the listeners out there to understand the concept of extraordinary relation, um, let us take a private citizen, for instance. If I come and take you by force, without due process of law, without authority of law, I have kidnapped you. Or as some people would say, I have abducted you. So this is exactly what Nigerian government did. They went to Kenya and kidnapped Mazen Nandekano. So when government goes across national boundaries and takes, forcibly takes a suspect without due process of law, that government or that country has committed extraordinary rendition. It's a direct opposite of extradition. Extradition is a lawful process through which a fugitive suspect found in one nation can be transferred to another nation that has interest in putting him for trial. Everybody, every country recognizes extradition, extradition as the only process through which you can accomplish the transfer of a convict or a suspect from one nation to the other. Even Germany has the same law. Kenya has it, Nigeria has it. So it's not difficult to understand. It's not rock, rocket science that Nigeria, a member of Committee of Nations, a member of United Nations, a member of African Union bound by international treaties, obligations, conventions, protocols should in 2021 cross into Kenya, take Mazen Namdekano, put him in a private jet and rendition him to Nigeria without allowing him the benefit of undergoing the process, due process of extradition as codified under Kenyan law. That is what extradition rendition is and is inherently a form of torture. So when a nation commits a to put the rendition spec to trial, that's not just a theory. It has already happened in practice in, in several nations. And the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, Nigeria, ratified in 1979 and codified as part of her own domestic laws in 1983, provided at Article 12 that no person, no citizen of Nigeria or citizen of Kenya, no African found in any country in Africa can be expelled from one country to another without due process of law. So that's another way of understanding that Mazin Nandekan was expelled from
Article 12, again, of the African Charter, uh, to which Nigeria is a state party, prohibits what happened to him. Even under the Nigerian constitution, Nigerian constitution illegalized arbitrary arrest because the government of Nigeria is saying, oh, we arrested him and they can. Okay, fine. Arrest can be illegal. It can be arbitrary. So when you arrest somebody without due process of law, it becomes arbitrary arrest, which is prohibited under chapter four of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999. There are other international um, legal regime, like treaties, protocols, and convention, like the United Nations Convention Against Torture, uh, Torture and other protocols promulgated there on that. And of course, companion African human rights uh, legislations at the continent, continental level, to which Nigeria is also a state party that prohibited extraordinary rendition by name. It mentioned extraordinary rendition and said, extraordinary rendition is hereby prohibited. And he went on to say, nobody, no suspect, no convict shall be transferred from one nation to the other without the due process of law called extradition. Uh, let me ask uh, uh, Mr. Honko, because I think we have a similar case in uh, Europe. Uh, 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 I'm saying with regard to that of the um, Catalonian case, uh, uh, Puch de Mont. Uh, sir, could you? say something concerning, uh, or let me ask, do you see similarities in that of uh, Namdekano and uh, uh, Push them on? And what happened to Namdekano? Would it have happened to anybody in Europe? Yes, indeed, there is uh, some similarities to the case of Catalonia and the case of uh, Push them on. Uh, on 1st of October 2017, there was a referendum in Catalonia. I was uh, witnessing this referendum. I was uh, in Catalonia and uh, observing the situation. And um, it was only a, a, a referendum. And, and Puigdemont was the then president of Catalonia. And uh, afterwards, um, uh, um, the whole government of Catalonia were um, arrested or they had to flee. And uh, Puigdemont and some others fled to, most of them to uh, Belgium, to Brussels. And, um, uh, and in between, he was um, arrested in Germany through Interpol as well, like Mr. Canu. And um, <clears throat> The German, um, uh, uh, the German uh, courts refused to extradite um, uh, Mr. Puigdemont, and the same did later uh, the Belgian um, uh, um, courts. So, um, uh, so far, in, uh, Puigdemont lives in Belgium, but a Spanish uh, state wants to, to get him, but um, according to the Belgian um, uh, authorities, uh, he would be not um, extra uh, dicted. So there are some similarities. The problem we have is that we have in the international law, we have two principles. Uh, uh, and it's always a question how to how to deal with the two principles. On the one hand, we have the, as uh, um, Mr. Barrister said, uh, we have the principle of self-determination. Uh, on the other hand, we have the principle of uh, of uh, um, territorial integrity of, of states, and these are um, often conflicting um, interests. And the question is, for a civilized nation, how to deal uh, with with this uh, question? We had a situation in in Britain where there was a, um, a respect for. A Scottish independence movement. There was a, a referendum which would have been accepted, but there was no majority for this. So, but this would have been accepted in 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 
In Spain, it was uh, called illegal, um, as it is uh, probably in Nigeria. Uh, so that's, um, but I see as well some similarities. Of course, it's not, it's not that uh, violence involved. In, in Spain and Catalonia, it's it's more let's say it's not in this brutality. Uh, I've seen uh, uh, how brutal are things uh, at the moment in 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 uh, the region of Biafra uh, and and uh, so on. But um, to 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 understand the situation, I would like to interest be interested who is supporting Nigerian government in this. Is it Britain? I'm not sure because Britain is not uh, um, uh, is not um, uh, see uh, does not see IPOP as a terrorist organization. But as far as I understood, there are strong relations between Nigeria and Britain, stronger than that of Germany. Germany is not a um, a central player there. Um, and is there any debate? Um, uh, uh, in the British public or in the British Parliament, we have contacts to British MPs um, because Britain is, I think, it's it's for your conflict much more important than uh, uh, Germany is. Maybe you can tell me something about this, Mr. Burns. Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Should I? Yeah, go ahead. Sir. Okay. Parliamentarian uncle, he raised very important question. Yes, you know, uh, diplomatic politics it teach influence, uh, not German fear of influence, but German pressure can still be brought to bear in a bi-directional, and I'll tell you why, German outrage is justified. In 1984, Nigeria, under the present, current president, when he was a dictator in 1984, he was a soldier, and he came into power through a bloody military coup. So he was in charge. He was the head of the state, a military coup. Now, he, Nigeria in 1984, under the current president, attempted extraordinary rendition of a certain Nigerian politician named Omaru Biko. I think he's late now. I think the parliamentarian may recall uh, he seems to be a highly read, highly traveled, knowledgeable man. They put the, the, the Nigerian agents went to UK, London, precisely captured this man, put him in a crate, and marked the crate diplomatic baggage. Took the crate to the airport and attempted loading the crate into a Nigerian Airways plane that had flown in to London for that purpose. They dropped the man, and inside that crate, I think there's an Israeli physician who collaborated with them, who was uh, injecting the man with substances to keep him uh, comatose. So they attempted to load this crate containing this human cargo into the aircraft when a vigilant British intelligence officer at the airport spotted something funny about the crate and stopped them and then questioned them. Uh, they were not very credible so they opened the crate and lo and behold there was there were two men inside uh, one the israeli physician uh, and the man that was going to be renditioned so britain uh, you know frustrated that rendition and what happened britain broke diplomatic relations with nigeria for two years britain arrested 17 persons in connection with this attempted rendition, they convicted four and sentenced them to various terms of imprisonment from six to eight years. They deported many of them, including the Nigerian High Commissioner, 
equivalence of an ambassador, the high commissioner, Nigerian high commissioner was expelled. Most of the Nigerian diplomatic personnel were expelled. The Nigerian aircraft was arrested and the pilot was nearly arrested, but he, he made a lucky escape. And the world community was applauding Britain. The, war, the conscience of the world community was shocked at what Nigeria tried to do. Omar Rudiko, British citizen. He acquired nationality uh, several years ago, probably just about 15 years ago, and acquired British nationality. And he had publicly on his radio broadcast renounced his Nigerian nationality. So Britain has more interest in Nam the Kano than they had in the man that was uh, near early rendition in 1984. But we have not seen um, adequate countervailing measures or outrage from the British government or the High Commission here. Uh, I know that they have tried, but my thing is that they haven't tried enough. I, I am the one that is in contact with the High Commissioner here, but. I know they are trying to reach out to Canada, but that's not enough. Britain needs to come down heavy, very heavy, upon Nigeria and Kenya to make inquiries, faith inquiries. Where is our citizen that entered Kenya in May 2021 and suddenly found himself in Nigeria? What happened? And if Britain finds that out, discovers, confirms, that Kano was not subjected to extradition process in Kenya, but extraordinary rendition, it lies with Britain to rule out Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, Mr. Mr. Hunk, I think uh, the barrister have problem with his connection currently. So um, yes, I think we still need uh, more uh, light on the issue of how Germany can uh, come in or help in the case of Namdekano. Uh, I think we, we still need some elaboration uh, in that context. However, let me remind our, uh, let me ask you something, because I remember uh, or I heard about a certain Bridgette, um, Bridgette Johnson from Togo um, that has a similar case um, with the government of Togo, she's a member of the opposition. The, the difference, however, between Namde Kanu and Bridget Johnson is that uh, Kanu is already in the prison and Bridget Johnson not. So um, I want to ask you, sir, is, is, I mean, you, you moved a motion of uh, parliamentary, protect uh, parliamentary, uh, something like that. Can it be extended uh, to Namde Kanu? Well, I, th I think the main difference between Brigitte Johnson and uh, um, Namdi Kanu is that uh, Brigitte Johnson, uh, as far as I understand, she's a member of parliament in uh, Togo. And this uh, program, uh, we have a program in the German parliament. Um, it is called Parliamentarians Protect Parliamentarians. And so I can make a motion and ask for accepting a person in, a, in another country to be part of this program. And um, I, I raised this motion in the case of Brigitte Johnson in Togo. 
and it was accepted. So officially she is part of this uh, program, which is mainly a symbolic uh, issue. Yes, yeah. uh, it's symbolic. Uh, uh, but it's uh, not, it's, I think it's uh, important. Um, in some special cases, it, it, it doesn't have to be a, a formally a parliamentarian, a comparable figure. This could be maybe uh, Nandu Kanu, but I'm, I'm not sure about it. Uh, and it's, it, is, um, it could be a possibility uh, to do it, um, but we have to 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 approve it if it's uh, possible and uh, okay. because it's a very I think it's a more probably for the uh, chair of the human it's 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 uh, decided by the chair of the human rights committee in the German Parliament. Now we are in the process of, of building a new human rights committee and we will have a new chair. I don't know who, right. who will who it will be, but uh, um, I think it's uh, um, we have to prove it. Uh, uh, we have to to. To vote. To, to, to check it uh, uh, okay. if it's possible. All right. So, and. Uh, maybe one, um, Robinson, maybe one question as well yeah. for the barrister. Yes. What's now the process? What's going on? Uh, the trial against uh, Mr. Kanu. What is the next, uh, um, how you see the next months? Or is there a central uh, date uh, where we have to be, which we have to be aware of? How it's going on? What do we expect in the next months? Yes, um, the 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 hearing, um, the last date the hearing was done, or the case come up came up in court was twenty first October. Uh, on that day, it was adjourned to tenth November. So we expect to be in court on tenth November, and but on tenth November we don't expect any trial to occur. I had made it clear from the beginning that there is going to be trial within trial. I don't think it's appropriate for the court to jump to trial without conducting an inquiry, a judicial inquiry in the court inside the hearing as to how Kano got before the court. So this was a man that was granted bail by the same court in 2017, and he got missing. It was supposed to be a word of the court. It was supposed to be under the protection of the court. And then suddenly he's before the court. So it's proper process, proper thing to do is for the court to inquire, make an inquiry as to how Kano got before the court. If Kano is before the court without due process of law, then that's a challenge to jurisdiction of the court. It's a barrier to prosecuting Kano. That is the motion that we are going to move on the 10th November, and then we see how that goes. Hello? I'm, I'm here, all right? Okay, so yeah. the, another question I would like to ask you, sir, is uh, uh, Mr. Honko, I'm referring to you. Um, you have a, a um, the so-called uh, uh, small question, if you will, of Kleine Amfrage, something like that, uh, on the Bundes Parliament, um, on the issue of Biafra and uh, in, uh, Namdekano by extension. Um, I. I know you did something like that, or you uh, you you had the intention of doing something like that, or have you done it, sir? No, we are checking um, what could be a, a meaningful uh, questioning of our. It's a question to the government. Um, the problem is, uh, uh, it, it's only we can only ask what our government did. I cannot ask what uh, uh, what what is uh, Kenya doing or what is Britain doing. I can only ask what our government did, uh, and I'm not. I'm still in the process of trying to understand what is the position of our government in this case. For example, I could question: um, Will the German embassy in, in Lagos will they observe uh, the uh, trial of Mr. Kanu? Will they go there? This is. Or, or these kinds of issues, but so far, 
uh, um, uh, we did not uh, um, proceed uh, with a, um, a formal question to the government, um, but uh, um, uh, it could be that we will do it. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, um, I mean, you you uh, you have had the quest uh, the answers from the right source. Uh, that is uh, uh, Barrister Ejimako, uh, uh, the attorney of Namdekano. You've had the stories, and then I think it's uh, uh, it's left for you um, to to know if you can get to him if, if you need more questions. Uh, it's possible, and um, I would say uh, to Mr. Ejimako, uh, Barrister Ejimako. The there is the recent news, however, is uh, that the 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 case uh, which was supposed to hold uh, last uh, on second of this month uh, was adjourned. Why? Well, yeah, that's a a case I brought an originating action before uh, the High Court of Arabia State uh, seeking for the enforcement of Kano's fundamental rights. Uh, it's uh, it's some, somewhat different from the one in the federal capital, Abuja, uh, because fundamental rights uh, cases are considered sui generis. They are considered special uh, status cases. Uh, Cardinal's fundamental rights were violated, that's my position, in 2017, when the armed forces uh, went to his house uh, uh, to kill him. And uh, his rights continue to be violated all the way to Kenya. There's an unbroken chain of causation uh, that uh, did not stop with the attempted extrajudicial killing in Abia State, Nigeria. It continued all the way to Kenya, where they captured him in hot pursuit and renditioned him to Nigeria. So this created new and separate grounds of action separate from the criminal allegations that they are pursuing in Abuja against him that compelled me to approach the high court where this thing started, the Python dance or the attack occurred within the territorial jurisdiction of that high court, uh, seeking enforcement of his fundamental rights. Uh, the government has responded and, you know, with no defense, they responded with applications for extension of time to file their defense. And these applications are pending. I opposed the applications. Normally, I wouldn't have opposed such applications, but this is a very sensitive uh, case. And uh, fundamental rights uh, actions are supposed to be concluded quickly. And my client is in, is in detention. He's been in detention for four months. Uh, and he's been detained by the very people that renditioned him. Uh, you know, if I can make an analogy, Kano's detention by the state security uh, services in Abuja, Nigeria, is akin uh, to giving custody of a rape victim to the rapists. Uh, the people detaining him are the people that renditioned and tortured him in Kenya for eight days. So I do not trust in the propriety of that. So I want to get to this case in Abia State as quickly as I can, because I'm not asking for bail. I am, I'm, I'm asking for what is entitled under the law, which is to release him unconditionally and allow him safe passage to his country of uh, usual domicile, which is the United Kingdom. So the case was supposed to be hard, on 2nd November, uh, probably on the motions of the government to file their defense out of time. It wasn't possible because the court did not sit. So for that reason, it was adjourned or postponed to 19th November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the, uh, I think we are almost to the end of this discussion, but before we go, I want to ask you a question personal, sir. Um, You've been so much involved in the issue of uh, 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 trying to, I mean, free your, your client Namdi Kano from the uh, Nigerian custody. And uh, despite this effort you have been making, there has been also situation and uh, that came up whereby 
uh, you are highly criticized or some people say, I mean, things that doesn't actually happen. I think, uh, I mean, I mean, I know, you, I do know you're a professional, but no matter how professional we are, I still think that sometimes we're also at the mercy of our emotion. I would like to know, do you sometimes uh, feel like you, you can't handle this again? I mean, or do you, do you tell the, the Biafrans uh, that you will continue to work for Namdekano uh, till eternity, till you bring him out? Well, first of all, <laughs> I was trained in America and uh, under the best traditions of uh, ethical commitment to my clients. I am uh, rock steady. I am committed to representing Mazin Mandekano and members of the indigenous people of Biafra, who I believe are being persecuted in Nigeria. That's my position as a lawyer. So anybody you know, that is putting something out there on social media or in the form of criticism, I don't consider those people to be part of my clients. I don't think any true Biafran is unhappy with what I'm doing. I don't think any true IPOB member, those in Germany, UK, anywhere in the world, the US, they're not, they're very, very happy with what I'm doing. Nandekano is very happy with what I'm doing. I have this 100% confidence and that's what matters to me. So anybody that uh, tries to put out any negative uh, vibrations out there in the public, uh, I consider that person uh, not to be a member of IPOB or the person may be working against uh, Kano's uh, interest because you cannot have it both ways. You cannot use the name of Namde Kano and the name of IPOB uh, to spew hate against his lawyers, members of his family, uh, people closest to him, or his deputies that he left behind, you know, uh, to manage some affairs. So those people that might be, be against such conduct, I consider them to be the enemy. Uh, for want of a better word, I use the word the enemy, because when you are doing something that interferes with the efforts to you know, to, to seek the unconditional relief of Mazen Mandekan or to alleviate the conditions uh, of this predicament, then you are the enemy. You are not a member of IPOB, you are not a Biafran. You must be the enemy. So that's just the way I see it. And such things give me more strength. It means I'm doing something right. It means some people are not happy with the fact that I'm doing something right. So that makes me um, uh, stronger and more committed. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I thank you, sir, Mr. Mr. Hunko. You are, uh, you, we thank you very much for participating in this conference. And uh, yeah, once again to Barrister, thank you very much. Like you've said, a gold, like James Hadley Chess, uh, one title I remember I said, a golden fish has no place to hide. So yes. you are a golden fish. You, it's inevitable that people will criticize you, that people will come against you. And like you've just mentioned, you don't even know who, uh, who exactly is behind this, um, 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 this uh, action. It could be the enemy. So anyone who is doing that is essentially an enemy. It can't just be a good one. Thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers that have been able um, to, I mean, listen to this discussion. Uh, we we'll, like to tell you could be having this type of discussion every now and then so we thank everyone who has worked so hard to make sure that this very discussion come through thank you very much and uh, yeah wish wish you goodbye sir um, mr Unko, do you have a last word for for us no thank you very much for this interesting uh, debate um i think we will follow up uh, the situation of mr kanu and the situation in Nigeria and Biafra, and I uh, hope there will be a solution uh, come out of dialogue, not of uh, 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 violence. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hanko, uh, the parliamentarian. I appreciate you, uh, Biafrans, that I represent and IPOB. I, I speak on the, I express my, uh, their appreciation on their behalf to you for your efforts, and I ask that you do more to alleviate their suffering in Nigeria. Thank you, sir. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Right. That's all for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, viewers.